listen up don't y'all get on this bus without no pen and paper let's get right into this hello you guys i am back today with a super important video today's topic is going to be on starter lock tips and things that you need absolutely need to know this is going to be split into three different categories today we have the wash retwist tips second is your overall hair health scalp condition things like that and the third is the mental motivational part baby we're gonna go ahead and roll into category number one which is your wash day and maintenance tips listen y'all if i could write a a guidebook on locks page number one wash your hair wash your hair listen now Listen, listen, listen. I know that there are some people with locks that will go four, five, six months without washing and their scalp will still be clean. That is fine. And I'm by no means saying that they have dirty hair at all, but why? Why would you do that? So both of my sets, I got my first wash after three weeks, three weeks. and. I had no issues. My first set though, I did have some issues with um, some of the locks around the edges coming out. So that was a little bit of a struggle. But besides that, I didn't have any issues. If you have a dirty scalp, your hair is not gonna flourish the way that it needs to. It's gonna cause buildup. It's not gonna grow. You're gonna suffocate your scalp. There's just so many reasons why you should not be not washing your hair. And besides that, water is amazing for your locks. I'm telling you, it's gonna speed up the process because that water is gonna tangle your hair up more and tangles and mats is what you want. Your locks are literally tangled, matted hair. That's what you want. So there's really absolutely no reason for you to not be washing your hair, even in your starter lock days. Now there are a few things that you can do to take precaution, which leads me into tip number two. There are two different ways that if you are concerned about your locks coming out while you are washing, you can either do one of these two methods. So method number one is actually what the woman that started my locks did uh, for my first set. She just pretty much put my hair in a bunch of like just loose little ponytails around my head and she washed my locks with those ponytails in my head. Now also what you can do is you can also wear a wave or a stocking cap and wash your hair through that stocking cap. Now I've never personally done this before, but you can find plenty of YouTube videos, I'm sure that's somebody who's calling me. You can find plenty of YouTube videos, I'm sure, and somebody will be able to advise you on how to do so. So if you're worried about your locks coming out, your starter locks coming out, that does not mean that you cannot wash your hair. That is number one, okay? That is so important. I don't understand why that's a thing in the lock community. It'll do you more good than it'll do you bad. All right, y'all. So the next tip we're going to roll into is to rinse your locks with apple cider vinegar. Now, this, I don't want anybody to get confused with the apple cider vinegar rinse soak detox that a lot of people with locks will do that includes the apple cider vinegar the lemon juice baking soda and water we are not talking about that that is a super effective super strong detox that you only want to do once or twice a year maybe and it, you know it's really cleansing but we're talking about you just pouring some apple cider vinegar on your locks after you wash what i do personally is i don't do this every single wash by the way um since i've been locked up I'm at four months, September 17th will be five months. I've washed my hair six times since I've been locked up already. I wash every three, every three weeks, that's my current routine. And I have done this apple cider vinegar rinse, I wanna say three times so far. What I will do is I'll wash my hair and then afterwards I will just get like a little bowl that I have and I'll pour the apple cider vinegar and let it run down. And I leave it on for three minutes. I'll put me on a little song, I'll jam a little bit while I'm in there and then I'll just rinse it out. You just rinse it out. And the benefits of the apple cider vinegar are that it's extremely clarifying. So it's gonna be really good to, you know, give your hair a good cleanse and make sure that there's nothing lingering, no buildup or anything like that. Um, apple cider vinegar is also amazing for balancing your scalp's pH level. So if you have any type of scalp issues, any type of flaking, anything like that, the apple cider vinegar is gonna do you some justice it's going to do you some justice okay it's also very very beneficial if you have like lackluster locks you feel like you lack some shine use that and it'll bring that back honey it'll bring it back okay next tip now a little hack that you can do if you know you want your hair to lock up a little bit faster if you being impatient 
or you know if you just you feel like your your hair is just having a little bit of a tough time have issues with you know unraveling things like that what you can do is you can actually use a little bit of sea salt or pink Himalayan salt when you wash your hair um, now this is something that can be really really drying um, if you're not moisturizing so make sure that you are taking care of your hair if you're doing this I don't know how often you should do this per year I wouldn't recommend you doing this every wash I mean I've seen some people they do it pretty often but what you can do is you can just get you a little spray bottle and after you wash spray your hair with that sea salt water let it sit for a couple minutes same deal as apple cider vinegar and then rinse it out you don't got to do like a hard hard rinse like you can leave a little bit of like the sea salt residue but rinse your hair like don't don't just leave it dripping wet with sea salt water make sure that you rinse your hair but that'll help to lock it up faster because the salt actually helps to dry your hair out now yes it does dry your hair out but that's kind of what you want when it comes to your lock journey you don't want dry hair pretty much if say if you're putting a bunch of oils creams conditioners a bunch of stuff in your locks your hair is slippery and it's not getting the chance to tangle up with itself because it's, it's slippery it's creamy it's juicy okay it's not getting that chance to actually intertwine with each other and dry up together and tangle up so make sure that if you do do this sea salt hack that you are still moisturizing effectively throughout the week my dog is judging me <laughs> okay y'all so next on the list we got ditching the shower cap okay this bad boy you don't really need like that no more so when you have a nice fresh retwist or it looks good if you even care about you know a retwist some people don't and you surely don't have to um but if you have a nice retwist and you still trying to like prolong it and not get your roots all puffy you're gonna want to still wear your shower cap but baby once some roots is puffed up stop going in the shower with that shower cap stop you don't need it so water let's bring it on back to that water is extremely beneficial for your locks say it with me water is good for them locks okay seriously the steam and the moisture from that water is going to do an amazing job to help to moisturize your locks so if you have the opportunity to get in that shower without that shower cap then please do so all right y'all so next retwisting listen don't feel the need to retwist after you wash your hair, y'all. I said, every time that you wash, don't feel the need to retwist, okay? A lot of people don't, you don't need to. Don't feel pressure, don't feel like, don't let the superficial appearance, you know, just don't let none of that convince you that you need to retwist your locks. If you wanna wash your hair and just go, then wash your hair and go. Don't let nobody make you feel like your locks are only beautiful when you have them retwisted. They're beautiful regardless. So if you don't wanna retwist, don't do it. Next, when you are washing your hair or even retwisting, you wanna make sure that you file your nails. Now I know y'all probably looking at me like, girl, move on to the next tip, but hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. It'll snag, it will snag your hair and you do not want it to snag your hair, especially when you wash, it is so inconvenient and disrespectful when your nails snag on your locks and they be ripping out hairs. File your nails. Next, super, super, super important. Did I mention it was important? The next one is to make sure that you are fully drying your locks. So what I will say about that is you know, I know a lot of the times, like as natural women, some natural women are really kind of like not for the heat, unnecessary heat, you know, they prefer to air dry. And if you prefer to air dry, that is perfectly fine. My last set, I was kind of like team air dry more so. I would blow dry sometimes, but I'm here to tell you that baby, you have locks now. If you want to use a little bit of heat on your locks and blow dry just to make sure that they are dry, then you do that. You do that. like you're okay like it's not like you're blow drying your hair all the time like just make sure that you are moisturizing and take care taking care of your locks always you know so that way you're not adding extra heat and it's actually damaging your locks but what you don't want to do is not let your locks fully dry and then you go and cover them up what can possibly happen is first of all 
they can start to smell and there is a such thing as mold inside of your locks i know one of the names for it out there is called like dread rot um, if you look that up i'm sure you could find some information but just look up mold inside of locks it's not something that you want to be stuck with because if you understand that your locks are something that you know you're not combing out your locks you can't just we don't have the same advan advantages as somebody with loose natural hair when it comes to everything we got a lot of advantages though but some things we don't have so if you get mold inside of your lock baby you're either gonna have to do like a serious serious detox and hope that it comes out or you're gonna drive yourself crazy and you're gonna try to pick it out and what's gonna happen is you're gonna damage your lock you're gonna damage your lock it may fall off you may cause thinning it may just have a hole in it i don't know but you're gonna damage your lock if for any reason i gotta go to sleep and my hair is a little bit damp i will not wear my bonnet what i will do is i will lay out my little satin kimono that i'll be wearing um, i will lay that out all over the bed and i will try to sleep on my stomach all night that way my hair is not being suffocated so if you got to do that do something but don't cover it up do not put your bonnet on and just hop into bed and go to sleep with your hair wet or whatever even if you got to start your locks in the very beginning of the day so they have time to air dry all day then do that have a routine so train your hair like that's literally like your hair is going through a whole process of it's going through trainings right now like it's going through the trials and the tribulations to get to the top to the top okay so make sure that you establish some sort of routine so your hair can get to know what it's supposed to be doing and get in the groove of things so whether you want to wash every four weeks five weeks six weeks um you know wash and retwist then that's fine you don't have to always be spot on at all um but just try to keep some some sort of routine so your hair knows what to expect and so you know what to expect i'm going to switch to every four weeks just because i feel like damn i'll blink and my three weeks is up i gotta retwist and wash again already so i'm tired of that anyway so we're gonna move it over to the four weeks and go from there and that'll be my new cons my new consistent routine now with my last set of locks i would do every five weeks but i felt like i kept saying that and then every time i would look like at the calendar it would pretty much be every four weeks it was between every four and five weeks so just make sure that you have a routine and you just kind of try to stick with it okay train your hair what you want it to do train yourself you didn't have it should you be bleaching your locks what products should you use what styles can you do all that go ahead and click on part two right here in this video i will be going over things like the overall lock and scalp health and condition things that affect those in your formation during your first year so don't go nowhere you guys go ahead and follow through click on part two and then i will lead you guys to part three a little bit later